it is time week one of the college football season here with the New York State Eagles dynasty mode and we are underway a new season starts today and a new era for the College of New York State how's it going everybody slogan here back with another video and yeah we're kicking things right off week one against Coastal Carolina hoping to start out the season on a good on good terms but you know we are a young school so we are just gonna see what is gonna happen Coastal Carolina takes the snap around the 50 yard line they're throwing it over the middle it's gonna be caught and run out to about the 25 I don't think I talked about it last video but my goal for this season is to win six games I think a good first season for this for this program only not having that many good players would to be to get bowl eligible so that's kind of what I'm hoping for is just to get bowl eligible and make a bowl game I think that would be a good just a good season for us Coastal Carolina already at the 10 takes the snap the quarterback drops back looking in the pocket he's gonna throw it and the receiver is gonna get just short of the yardage and they're not gonna go for it shockingly line up for probably like a like a 22 yard field goal and the kick is up oh my god it's no good he actually missed it from 22 yards away I cannot believe he just missed that I have never seen a kick miss from that close in my entire life that is embarrassing so the Eagles are gonna catch a break here on the first drive of the game as Coastal Carolina is gonna absolutely botch that field goal so here's our first look at this Eagle offense third down and five it's gonna be a handoff to uh, Ryan Russell and he's gonna get just short of the fourth first down and nothing's doing there on that drive so again we go back to Coastal Carolina's possession it's gonna drop back he's gonna throw it deep down the field and it's gonna be broken up there a nice play in the secondary by the Eagles to break up that pass second and ten for Coastal Carolina making audibles at the line he's gonna hand it off to the running back who's gonna run and get a, about a 12 yard gain there the run defense is not looking too fantastic early on in this game. Coastal Carolina seems to be making some effortless runs. And right as I say that, they're going to run it up the middle for about another 12-yard gain. He already has 10 rushes for 63 yards, and we're not even we're only halfway through the first quarter. Run defense looking like Swiss cheese right now. Coastal Carolina throws it over the middle, and what a diving play by Andy Silver right there to knock that ball away. But here comes the field goal attempt for Coastal. Can they get redemption for after missing that 22-yard attempt earlier? And this one is going to be right down the pipes. 3-0 lead for Coastal Carolina right there. In the super sim, here we go. Ryland Russell with the 20-yard rush. And that is going to be an interception by Logan Goby. Coastal Carolina's defense makes the first big play of the game. Not looking too good on offense to start this game for us, as we are not doing the best. But Andy Silver is going to make a fantastic play there on fourth down for the Eagle defense. What a play right there on fourth down to get a big stop one of our best players the senior but here's Gobi drops back and that ball wasn't even close not not looking good so far for the for the young quarterback in his first first game of his career third down and eight Gobi takes the snap and he gets absolutely swarmed by a blitz up the middle by the linebacker and that's going to be fourth down and 15 as he's slow to get up after that hit but here comes our kicker who, if I remember correctly, is pretty solid. This is a long field goal. This has got to be at least like 52, 53 yards. And the kick is up, and it is good. What a kick there by the Eagle kicker to boot that one through. I forgot his name. But we're moving on. Second down and seven on the ensuing offensive possession for the Eagles. Gobi takes the snap. He's looking, and that ball is going to be intercepted. And there is nothing but green grass in front of him. That is going to be a house call for Coastal Carolina as it's going to be a pick six. Not what you want to see there from your young quarterback in his first game as that hitch route got absolutely read like a book. And Thomas Fletcher takes that one back to the house, and the Eagle fans are absolutely stunned here early on at home. Not what you want to see right there. Just absolutely stared down the receiver on that hitch route, and the linebacker makes a fantastic play there. And it's going to take this one all the way back to the house. Not a great start from this Eagle offense. Not what you want to see at all. Here we go again. The next drive. Already behind the chains with a third and nine now for New York. Gobi drops back to pass. He's looking. He throws it over the middle. That's going to be caught by Brian Henry in his first career college game. He gets his first reception. Third down and one here. 
for the Eagles. About to cross the 50. It's going to be a quick pass over the middle, and that one is going to be caught by Kirk Jackson. First and 10. Let's see if this Eagle offense can finally get something going here. Gobi takes the snap. It's going to be a quick draw to Ryland Russell, who's going to get popped at the end, but get a five-yard gain. Third down and 10. He's trying to keep this drive alive as nothing is going well for offense. Gobi's looking. He draws back. He feels the pressure, and he's going to throw that one away. Nothing going here for this Eagle offense early on. But the Eagle defense, once again, has forced a third down and 10 for Coastal as they're going to give a draw play. The tackle is broken, but good plays there by the linebacker and the defensive end to make sure that doesn't go anywhere. Another long field goal attempt, this time for Coastal. Probably about a 54-yard attempt. As the play clock winds down to end the half. Here comes the snap, the hold, the kick. And it is right down the middle. So we're seeing long field goals made and short field goals missed. College football for you right there. It's here in the third quarter now. Third down in inches for the New York State Eagles. As they're going to do a little pop pass to, I believe that is Moss. And he's going to get the first down. Here we are, first and goal, two yards away. Can the Eagles finally get on the board with a touchdown? Gobi drops back to pass, and that one is intercepted. What is going on today for the young quarterback? Just not reading the field well at all as he stares down that slant route and throws a pick. Two brutal interceptions on the verge of scoring position. And, you know, it, it is his first game, so I'll cut him a little bit of slack. But, man, we did talk about this. He doesn't have a lot of awareness. He's a good athlete, but the awareness isn't the best. As Coastal is going to grab another uh, field goal to make it a 16-3 to game as the fourth quarter wanes down. I mean, the defense has played phenomenal this game. It's just these it's the turnovers, the interceptions. As Gobi throws that one over the middle to Brian Henry, and that one's going to be caught. It's just, you, can't, you can't turn over the ball. That That's that's the thing, as Russell's going to be tackled two yards away from the first. It's just you can't turn the ball over at this level. You might be able to get away with some stuff in high school, but these college kids are a lot better than your average high school defensive back as Logan Gobi's going to throw that one to Kirk Russell on the slant route over the middle for the first touchdown of the season for New York State. Still a 10-16 ball game, or pending the extra point. So that was a good drive right there. Gobi throws that slant route over the middle right into Kirk Jackson. He doesn't throw it behind him. Man, we really shouldn't be losing this game. Turnovers have really cost us. We could easily have two touchdowns right now and have this game at least tied. Third and six, the biggest play of the game so far. Can the Eagle defense get their offense the ball back with a chance to win the game? Oh, and that is a great play by Andy Silver. Makes another good play on the receiver. But here we go. Can the Eagle offense get something going here? Gobi's going to pull the ball on the read option. He has some space. Gets the first down. And the ball is free. And it's going to be picked up by Coastal Carolina. Absolutely not what you want to see there. The third turnover or fourth turnover of the game, mind you, by Logan Gobi. Three interceptions, one fumble, just careless with the ball for the young quarterback. And that, it's going to be hard to overcome that if the defense can't get a stop. Just absolutely brutal turnover as the safety comes in. Peanut punches that ball out on the read option. He had some space. I wanted to see him use his legs a bit more. He's a rushing quarterback, but you got to hold on to the ball. And that is all she wrote for week number one as the Eagles are going to lose to Coastal Carolina at home 18 to 10. Absolutely brutal game for the young quarterback. But with Fletcher, two picks, one defensive touchdown. What 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 a day for for him for Coastal. But just just a really not a good first game from this Eagle offense. Gobi just could not get anything going in the passing game. I mean it's the turnovers. You can't throw three interceptions and fumble it. Four turnovers that it's an easy way to lose a game is turn the ball over. He still had a 100 passer rating, which I don't understand how that works. 273 passing. He's got one TD to three three interceptions, sacked five times. I, I, but I just don't I don't like that we're throwing the ball 54 times. We really need to run the ball more. Gobi's not a pocket passer at this stage. But and Rylan Russell, productive on the ground with a four yard per carry average. So, you know, it, it's good to see that. Receiving end. Bradley Moss, not who you'd expect, who I expected to be at top of the receiving. But Zeke Watkins is going to win Defensive Player of the Week with six tackles and one TFL, our best defensive end. So that's good to see there get some awards. But yeah, let us let me show you all the scouting because I didn't show you this last week. Just going through here, just have some three, a couple three stars, mostly two stars. But I, we these are who I've been pursuing 
We're in a battle with Central Michigan for a lot of these guys, so my philosophy was if we are fighting with Central Michigan for recruits, I feel pretty good about getting some of these guys. I really wanted to focus on the, the offensive and defensive line because honestly, when you're playing these better teams, the biggest difference is in the trenches. So if we, I thought if we can get some offensive and defensive linemen in here that are a little bit better, start developing some of those guys because I, I, that's just how I want to build a team through through the trenches, defensive and offensive line. And then we actually do have a couple receivers that I was targeting too, just to help our receiving game. But we got some O-linemen coming, hopefully. We don't have that many recruiting hours because we're such a small school, which makes it really tough to try to get a lot of these a lot of these players. But we don't have a ton of seniors, I don't think, if I remember correctly. But I'm just trying to at least get a class of 14 to 15 guys, hopefully, that can come in and just fill some positions of need for us. But I, I mean, I'm not focusing too much on quarterback. I got one quarterback on my board that's a three-star gym or two-star gym. I don't remember. And he's pretty solid as well. But, you know, I, I just want to get some guys in here and try my best to do do what do what we can to better this team. So if we can win a bowl game, if we can get to a bowl game in year one, maybe we can boost our hours up and get, if we're a better prestigious school, get some more recruiting hours because that's going to be the key. But here we go. Week two against Rutgers. Michael Drake's alma mater. It, it's about to go down. What can we do against Rutgers? We got paid to come get blown out. That's the idea. So if we can even keep this game close, I will be impressed. As Ryland Russell is going to get a nice carry for 14. Second and 12, Goey drops back, throws it over the middle of Rylan Russell. And the first drive's not going as bad as I expected so far. Playing a Big Ten team as a small F's in-state school. See what we can do. Goby drops back to throw, and that one is going to be intercepted again. The turnovers for Logan Gobi continue into week two with now his fourth interception in just f five quarters. Longer Beam just jumps that route. If he put some air under that, that could have easily been uh, a completion as Rutgers is going to get like a 20 to 35 yard rushing touchdown right there. Not a great start for your New York Eagles right here. We got a third and 10 here. Let's see what Gobi can do. Gobi's going to hand off. He's going to throw it over the middle, and it's going to be caught by Brian Henry for the touchdown. But hold on a minute. There is a flag, and it looks like it's going to be coming back. Holding on the offense. We finally get a productive play, but we get a freaking penalty. It's just how it goes as a small score right now. But now we've got third down and 20. See if we can just get into field goal range here and make some productive. Gobi drops back. Nothing's there. Our whole O-line just decided not to block anybody, and that's going to be a sack. Ensuing offensive possession. Another third down and 12. We're throwing a screen. That's the rookie, rookie Marsh, Marcus Johnson who powers forward for a first down. Third and seven now. Gobi drops back to pass, throws it over the middle. That's a good throw into, into a tight spot to Bradley Moss. Bradley Moss already got three catches for 45 yards on the day. He's been showing out so far, showing some good traits as a, as a receiver. There's a throw over the middle to Brian Henry, who's going to get the first down. We have seven first downs to Rutgers as one. So that pick and that one drive is really all that Rutgers has been got. First down and 10. Gobi drops back to pass. Deep drop. He looks. That's thrown over the middle and caught by the tight end. Already 100 yards passing for Gobi as we reach 10 minutes left in the second quarter. I like that we were playing Marcus Johnson, the power back. As there's a handoff to Johnson, who goes up the middle, trying to fight for that first and gets to third down in inches. I really want to see us use both running backs, as I do like Marcus Johnson more. We get down here in the red zone as just a power back, and Ryland Russell's more as a receiving. Speaking of Marcus Johnson, he powers down to the one-yard line. So a good response here from the Eagle offense. And are we in the Wildcat? I, we have our back, our like fifth receiver, or fourth or third running back, who's going to pitch it to the tailback, the foot, the backup fullback, who goes in for the touchdown. Some offensive coordinator wizardry for Michael Drake there, calling the plays. Wow. 
as Seward, the tailback, gets in for the touchdown. So there you go. There's a little wrinkle to get in there. And we have a tie game. Very low scoring. But here comes Rutgers. Let's see if the defense can make a stop. It's a pitch on the thing. Oh, and what a spin move by the Rutgers receiver who barrels down the sideline and gets knocked out of bounds at the 10-yard line. What an absolute insane spin move right there as Rutgers starting to show some of their prowess on the field, and that's going to be an easy walk-in for a touchdown. Rutgers' is more elite talent is starting to show here on the field compared to our crappy little one-star college. So, you know, we're still within seven. If we can keep this close, I'd be very impressed. As there's another throw over to Bradley Moss over the middle, who's having a day so far, number nine. Very shifty receiver, but he's doing a good job of just finding space in these zones and getting some nice yards after catch. Play action. Gobi looks, throws over the middle, and that one's caught by the tight end before he gets his legs absolutely taken out from him. They're running some no-huddle offense, trying to keep Rutgers on their heels. What can the Eagles do here? Gobi takes the snap. Quick snap. It's going to be a little wide receiver screen to the outside, and that's going to get seven yards to Kirk Russell. Wow. What, what a drive so far here by the Eagles. A second down and three. Let's see what they can do. The tight end's going to come in motion to the right side, lining up as a tailback. It's going to be a handoff to Rylan Russell, who only gets a couple yards, but still gets the first down. The O-lineman could not hold his block there. But here we go. First and goal from the 10. Can the Eagles punch it in? No, and it's intercepted. Logan Goby does it again and hurts his team by throwing an interception. What are you doing, young man? He absolutely stared down the receiver and threw it right into his hands. Another productive drive put away by turnovers. That is his sixth or seventh interception. I've lost count now, but here comes Rutgers on third and 20. The defense doing its job again. But now we jump to the third quarter. I mean, good Lord. It's like we can't, we just can't get him out of our own way right now. This young man, the coach needs to pull him aside, get his mind right. But still, with all the with two interceptions, Rutgers has not capitalized. Our defense has kept us in the game. Can Logan Gobi redeem himself and get into the end zone here and get this to a tie game with nine minutes left to go in the third quarter? First and ten, Gobi up to the line, making some audibles. He takes the snap, he drops back into the pocket, he looks and throws it over to Brian Henry, who just falls down for a quick gain of five yards. Second and five. Rutgers back with one single high. They load the box. It's a pass, though. Gobi throws to the outside. And that's going to be caught one yard short of the first down. But here we go. Third down and one. What can Gobi do here? Can he get his team into the end zone? He drops back. He's looking. He's looking. He's got all day to throw. What a great job by the Eagle line. All day in the pocket. Still nothing. He's still looking around. It's been about 10 seconds now. What? Look at this blocking. There's absolutely nobody even close to touching him right now. They drop three. Gobi throws it to the back of the end zone. It's caught by Moss for the touchdown. That was the best blocking I have ever seen in my life. Rutgers with the bold strategy to drop to drop 10 guy, nine guys into coverage and only rush three, and Moss finally gets open. But what what a coaching decision there by Rutgers to only rush three, but the Eagle line does a great job of picking up those blocks, and finally Moss finds a soft spot in the zone and just makes him pay. But here we go again. Rutgers is starting to get it going a little bit on offense. It's a good stop there by the defensive tackles, but Rutgers is just easily moving this ball into the red zone right now. It's starting to concern me a little bit. But here we go, and there's Rutgers, and he's going to stiff arm him and get close to the first, but he's stopped just short. And Rutgers is actually going to take the field goal here. Another interesting coaching decision to not go for it as a superior team. But they're just going to take their three points and going to make it a 17-14 to 14 ball game. But here comes New York again at the 50, trying to get into field goal range or at least tie the game. And there's a throw over the middle to number one. I don't know your name. Still learning. I think that's our fourth receiver. He's getting some action. But we're running the no huddle offense. What can the Eagles do here? Gobi's going to send Rylan Russell in motion. He pump fakes, takes the snap, throws it over the middle, and it is caught on the back shoulder by Bradley Moss, who's having an incredible game so far with nine catches for 107 yards. Gobi gets him back up to the line quickly, takes the snap, first and goal over the middle, and Kirk Russell gets absolutely creamed right there. Second and goal now from the five. Gobi. Sends the tight end in motion as the, to the wing back. 
He's going to pull down the read option, and he's going to walk the dog and get right in for the touchdown. Gobi leads the team down and brushes off his shoulders and says, I'm him. And the Eagles have taken a 20-17 to lead here. What a drive. The Eagles, are the Eagles really staying with a Big Ten team? Is Rutgers really going to get upset in the second game of the season? What a, what an, I did not expect this to happen. I didn't expect this game to be remotely close. The fact that we've been able to stay with Rutgers in this game, especially on the defensive end, has been very impressive. But here we go again, 21-17. Gobi throws it over the middle and it's picked off. Another interception from Logan Gobi and another play by the Rutgers defense as they just jumped that crossing route. What a play by the defensive back there. Sh Shaqen Loyal just absolutely jumped that crossing route. And Gobi seems like we have a little bit of a problem here with him. He's just throwing a lot of interceptions. It's that awareness, that super low awareness is coming to hurt him. But there's a good pass rush there to force a long field goal by Rutgers. The defense, once again, doing its job and not letting Rutgers get more than a field goal. As it's now going to be a 21-20 to lead for the New York Eagles. Ugh, Logan Gobi, what am I going to do with you, man? You can't be... It's, what are we at, like eight interceptions in two games now? That's not good. But here comes Rutgers, threatening again, throws a little wide receiver screen, and gets down to the down to the 20. Gosh, these turnovers are going to kill me, man. We, we could have easily won both of these games if we just played smart, fundamental football and didn't turn over. And the running back gets the edge and is going to get around to the 13-yard line. 30 rushes for 156 yards. The ground game, and this is what I said about the trenches, man. The biggest difference is the trenches. Rutgers' O-line is just absolutely destroying us. And there's going to be a slant over the middle and gets crushed, but down to the two. As Rutgers is probably about to just run this ball right up the middle for a touchdown here because our their O-line is creaming us. This running back is having the best game of his life right now, and there is an easy touchdown for Rutgers. And they are going to take a touchdown lead. Man, these turnovers are killing us. Just the turnovers. Can't throw three interceptions and four interceptions. Back-to-back -back games with three interceptions for Gobi. Six to start the year. That's not what you want to see at all. Rutgers gets, has the ball again, threatening again. There's a screen as the offense couldn't do anything. And it's looking like Rutgers' superior talent is starting to pull away here, especially if they put a touchdown on the board here. I think that's going to be about all she wrote. Rutgers is going to hand off the ball. It's going to be a good stop by the defense there. Second and goal for Rutgers. He takes the snap. It's going to be a quick run, and there is nothing but open field there. He's, he's down to the one. This running back's having the best game of his life. 30 carries, 160-something yards. About to have, like, probably his third touchdown of the game. But that's absolutely stuffed there. So they are going to force a field goal here, and this is going to stay a game. This, is, this was a huge stop to keep this a one-possession game. Yeah, you're going to need a touch. Do I trust the offense to get a touchdown to two-point conversion? Absolutely not. But, you know, it's still a game now. Anything's possible. First and ten. What can the offense do? As there's a handoff to Marcus Johnson. Glad to see him in the game getting some carries as the power back. But eight minutes to go. Can the New York Eagles tie this ball game? Second and five. Gobi takes the snap, looking in the pocket. He's looking, he throws it to Rylan Russell on the side of him, the crossing route, who makes a little move, breaks the defender's ankles, and gets down to the to the 17-yard line. 7.50 and counting in this game. A lot of time left. Gobi drops back in the pocket. He throws it to the corner of the end zone, and it is broken up last second. What a defensive play. That was a great throw, actually. Henry just could not hold on to that, even with his high catch and traffic ratings. Great defensive play pass break up there second and ten it's going to be a handoff to Rylan Russell who breaks a tackle breaks two tackles and gets to right to them right to the sticks I'm liking what I'm seeing from the ground game I really wish he would run the ball more or even run more options but Gobi drops back nonetheless throws over oh my god and he almost throws another pick oh my goodness scare me this is this is this is hard to watch sometimes fourth down and inches Gobi drops back. They send the blitz. And it's caught by Moss, who's in for the touchdown. The Eagles beat the blitz. Quick out route. And Moss has his second touchdown of the game and continues a stellar performance in week number two. Looking like our best receiver so far, the junior Bradley Moss. What a great season so far for him to start this year. 100 yards in the first game. And has another 
on the has definitely 100 yards in this game already so far. But here we go. The two-point conversion to tie this game. Can the Eagles tie up this game and make this potentially come down to the wire? And there's a quick slant route over the middle, and it is tied. 29-29. to 29. What can the Eagles do here on defense? This would be a massive stop. Third down and two, and the running back's going to get about 20 yards there. The ground game, it's just... We just can't stop it. We just don't have the defensive personnel to, stu to go against these O-line studs. It's going to be a RPO, and he's wide open over the middle, and the safety takes a bad angle, and that is going to be a 50-yard passing touchdown. And the defense couldn't do anything there. They all sold for the run and the RPO, and that was just gone. Nothing you could do about that. That is brutal. The offense just tied up the game, and the defense just allows a long TD. That was brutal. Chris Long, the senior on the slant route, just absolutely cooked on that RPO. No one was even close, and the 33 takes a bad angle there and can't get him down. That is rough. That's a rough one right there. But let's see what the offense can do, and they can do absolutely nothing as they went three and out, and now Rutgers is on the verge again. The quarterback looks, throws it to the middle, and that is going to be all she wrote for this game. The Rutgers talent finally prevailed. I'm still proud of my team for fighting their butts off and hanging with a, a Big Ten school. This is not a bad loss by any means. Only after the really shitty performance in Week One to come into Rutgers and you know have this be a game still, even with playing as poorly as we did with all the turnovers, still to keep this a game. I'm still very happy with the way my team played. But yeah, we still got second and six. We're still only down with two touchdowns with three minutes left. Let's see what we can do. Second and six for Logan Gobi. He drops back in the pocket. He's looking deep. He throws a lob pass down the sideline, and it's caught by Ryland Russell, who outruns the defense to the 10. And that's going to be a touchdown on that wheel route. What an absolute dime from Logan Gobi, showing some of his talent. That was a perfect, absolutely Aaron Rodgers-esque, just drop it in the bucket down the sideline pass. And Ryland Russell showing his elite track speed. Just sending it down the sideline. That's a nice little sidearm. Just lob it down the field. And Rylan Russell absolutely cooked that defensive back. And he was gone. So this is still a game again now. Only down by one possession. But unfortunately the defense is not able to hold on. And Rutgers is going to put this away here with a field goal. The snap, the hold, the kick. And it is good. What a... What a fantastic game this was. 36 points on Rutgers is not what I expected as Kobe's going to get dropped in the end zone here for a safety. But st what a just an insane second half for all the scoring. We hung, we hung in there with a really solid Big Ten team compared to our crappy little two-star, one-star college. But, I mean, good lord, guys. 100, 231 yards on 44 carries for three touchdowns. We just absolutely got pounded in the run game. And this is why I'm trying to sign like three defensive ends, three defensive tackles. We we just we just need to get better in the trenches. We need we need to get better better defensive tack. We just need better run defense, better in the trenches. And you know that's something that's going to come over time. But I'm still very very proud of the way our team fought today. We put up um was that 34 points in the second half. Not going to complain about that. Or no, 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 not 34. It's like 20, 28. No, no, that's right. 28 or 29, 29 points. But what a game. I mean, look at the offense. We had 530. They had 640 yards of offense. It was just we couldn't get a stop away. It mattered. The turnover still hurt. We, we were four for four in the red zone for four touchdowns. So, but look at that. It's the turnovers. Three turnovers to none. Th those three picks is really the difference in this game as their quarterback goes 33 for 47 for 394 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. And we look at Logan Gobi, or actually let's look at their running back first. Two, just, I mean, come on, that's insane. 231 yards, three touchdowns, 44 carries. This dude was literally lo looking like Adrian Peterson. And there's Rylan Russell has a solid game with 16 carries, 73 yards. Receiving, how about Bradley Moss? 12 catches for 123. 
61 yards for Kirk Russell. Rylan Russell with 121 year yards in the receiving game. Brian Henry, 73 yards. All our receivers did really solid, but I mean, it's just the turnovers. Gobi threw for 450 yards, but the three touchdowns, the three picks, it's those turnovers, man. He, Logan Gobi might be Jameis Winston in disguise. He might be Jameis Winston in disguise. Well, that was a tough loss, but you know, I am excited for the future of of this team i i'm these both these games are very different some inconsistencies so i'm not sure what to expect from here on out but I mean, we just hung with Rutgers for like the whole game so i don't know we will see what happens but that's gonna do it for this video guys i really hope you all enjoyed this series and keep giving me the views and the likes i really do appreciate it keep giving me the keep commenting anything you want to see suggestions anything i should do especially with the scouting stuff because I'm still kind of getting used to that. But yeah, thank you all for watching, liking, subbing, all that, all that good stuff. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one.